his love for us and growing spiritually through clear, sound biblical teaching. As you begin your worship this morning and you listen to the songs of praise, clear your heads from the busy week you have had and focus on who God is and what he has done through the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. First Chronicles 16.23 says, Sing unto the Lord all the earth. Proclaim his salvation day after day. Proclaim the good news of John 3.16 that God loved the world so much that he gave his only son and whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Now that's something to celebrate. So let's praise and worship the matchless name of God.
to stay connected with us. Take out your phones. Go to messages and open a blank message. Now type the word Anderson as your message and send that message to the number 95577. This is how you can receive news and information from Anderson. Now when we are ready to open for in-person service and more, you'll be ready and you'll hear about it. Again, just text the word Anderson to 95577 to stay connected with us. In this day and time, there are far more people that seem to get information from social media outlets, more so than factual medical uh, advice and factual medical sites. What we cannot allow is this continued war, war on, on factual information to guide us on how we control our health and how we approach receiving this vaccine, roll out of this vaccine, hesitancy to take this vaccine. No one knows everything there is to know about this vaccine. No one knows everything there is to know about this virus. You can't afford to do nothing. And if we're going to control this virus, control this pandemic, everyone has to participate. If we don't, uh, we'll fail. And it, it has to happen for rich people, for poor people, for black, for white, for, for, for everyone, for this pandemic to be controlled. Today's scripture lesson comes from the Gospel according to Mark, the fourth chapter, verses 26 through 29. And it reads, He also said, The kingdom of God is as if someone would scatter seed on the ground and would sleep and rise night and day, and the seed would sprout and grow. He does not know how. The earth produces of itself, first the stalk, then the head, then the full grain in the head. But when the grain is ripe, at once he goes in with his sickle, because the harvest has come. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Mm -hmm. But you don't, you just let me go through But I know you never let it kill me Only to make me strong I know it's all for purpose And I know it will always be So forget about the problems you're in, cause he's already working out in the end. And I, I dare you to trust him right where you are. Oh, I know, I know that it's all for a purpose.
Good morning. Good morning. We thank God again for yet another golden opportunity to, as we have said before, to be in the land of the dying and expecting to go to the land of the living. Because, church, we do know that after this life is over, for the believer, we would just begin to live. And we ask you, wherever you are and however you are viewing and hearing us, we actually just pause for a minute and pray with us. Oh, God, we we are your children. We are your handmaid. And through Jesus Christ, we are servants of yours. We thank you, oh God, for your bounty. We thank you for your provision. We thank you for your sustaining grace, oh God. We thank you for this little portion of health and strength. All that you have done for us, for us to be able to be a part of this day, oh God. We say thank you in the name of Jesus. We say thank you in the name of Jesus because we, in our hope, we hope that you respond to us like you responded to Jesus Christ. We hope by calling Jesus' name that you hear and see us like you heard and saw Jesus Christ. God, we ask you to continue in your will and in your way to fill us with your sweet Holy Spirit that we may one day be the people and children you called us to be. Strengthen us wherever we are, O God. Strengthen us all name by name and need by need. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 It's, 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 it's always a joy to, to, to wake up and, and be alive in a new day. But, but when, you, when, when, when you have sat around all evening and all night and, and heard the news and saw the news and, and tried to hide from the news, it, it pains you in your sleep and, and, and it bothers you when you wake up again to, to hear about the constant injustice. Uh, and the constant uh, slip of the finger and the constant whatever uh, from one group of people on the other. And, and as much, uh, and, 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 and you, you can run with this how you want to, but as much as we want the other to stop treating us black individuals uh, bad or, or wrong, uh, I think we need to begin to also look at ourselves and say, young black brother, young black sister, Let's begin to learn how to treat one another better. Uh, we, we are killing ourselves more than they are killing us. And, and we need to be mindful of, of who that brother is and who that sister is. And the Bible says, love one another. Treat one another as you would want to be treated. And what we, I believe what we need to do is, is, is start living what the Bible says. And this morning we are talking about the secret of the seed. And what I want us to hear that is, is there is a seed that needs to be planted or replanted or whatever needs to be done in, in our children's life. There is a seed of God that needs to be planted in our lives. As, as again, the Mississippi Conference led by myself and Reverend Bruce Case in Hattiesburg, Mississippi, are trying to lead us in, in, in reimagining a future, uh, a real, uh, realizing a future where we love one another, right here in Mississippi and all over the world, where we begin to live in peace and in harmony and allowing the kingdom of God to come on earth. Until we do that, we'll forever be seeking what God has planned for this world talking to a lady the other day, and she said, God made a perfect world. It just so happened that the people of this world are perverting themselves after all evil. I agreed with her. And church, you and I, beloved, need to learn how to love one another. Well, from the book of Mark, the scriptures that were read for us, Mark chapter 4, verses 26 through 29, the message for us this morning is the secret of the seed. The secret of the seed. Also, the, the high school graduates, those of you who are graduating from high school out of Anderson United Methodist Church, we ask you to call the office uh, this month, before April, before the, before the first Sunday of May, uh, so that we can compile our list of graduates and celebrate you for your accomplishments and all that you've done and all that you've been able to do. So from now until the 10th of May, we need you to call and get your information in. Again, the secret 
of the seed. And, 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 and you and I, we are, we are in our Easter season. We, we, have, we have celebrated the death and resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And we are in this season of now reminding persons. Just imagine if we were uh, those persons who were in that day. If we were those same people, we would be like Mark is doing, reminding the people who Jesus Christ was. This morning, we find ourselves in the book of Mark, who has been Mark, who has been considered as one of the first ones to write the full account and orderly account of the life, death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And here in the book of Mark, we find Mark writing in the time of the fall of Jerusalem. And here, can you imagine the turmoil and all of the anxiety that may be happening in that particular region at this time? There have many of them have been gone captive, but yet Mark is still writing a story saying there has been one that has come and walked among us that has showed us the way, that has shown us that no matter what the adversity looks like, no matter what may be stacked up against us, no matter what the government may be doing, there is still one that has come and showed us the way. And even in this day and time, if we keep our eyes on the one that showed us the way, if we, as the song says, if we keep our heart and our mind stayed on Jesus, then we too will continue to walk in that way, we too will find the way, and we too will be resurrected in that great day. Mark, I don't know how you like looking at pictures or movies, but, but Mark paints a good picture for us. He paints a picture with all of the persons involved. He does not sugarcoat anything about anybody, especially when it comes to this Jesus character. Mark paints a picture for us of Jesus on the move. He shows us, he talks about all of the miracles that Jesus has done and throughout all the towns and cities that he has been going through. He he does not waste time as as Matthew and Luke and John waste a little time on the genealogy of Christ. He says, no, though there are people in this world, as we evangelize in this religious world, we evangelize that there is a Christ that came into this world, lived among us, did some miraculous things around us us and still is ready to change your life. That is the gospel. That is the Jesus that Mark is talking about. He says, there is one that has come among us. And not only has he come among us, but our beloved he'll come again. In in the reading of the book of Mark, there is no question of who Jesus is, nor do you have to question what he does. In this active ministry of Jesus that Mark is concerned with, the first section deals with the ministry of Jesus in Galilee. Here we can trace his teachings all around that region. And in the tracing of his teachings, we begin to see the responses of the people to him, his words, and his deeds. Mark shows us that people respond to you in three ways. Mark shows us that people respond to who you are, what you say, and what you do. They respond to this because of, 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 of who you are. They, 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 they know who you are. They like who you are. And, and, and they'll follow you. They'll do things with you. They respond, respond to you <clears throat> because of what you say. You, you have not lied to them. What you, you practice what you preach. Your, your, your deeds, the things that you do, they want to do the things that you do, especially if it's uplifting and building the kingdom. And because of this view, through our experience, we have learned that if these three things are are contradictory to themselves, then people will begin to not, people will not respond to you. People will begin to go another way. Mark began to show us that because of Jesus Christ, people responded a certain way because of what he did, because of who he was, and because of what he said. The lowly individual was able to respond to Jesus Christ. Mark presents a gospel to us that that lets us know that Christ didn't come for all of those persons who were sitting high in the temple. He came for those persons who were disenfranchised, who who, who were disinherited, those persons who were considered peasants, those persons who was ostracized, those persons who were stepped over, looked over, and kicked around. Mark shows us that Jesus Christ came for you and I. 
He begins with a call to repentance, the announcement of the gospel of the kingdom that he <clears throat> then he selects certain disciples. He goes throughout that region and selects certain disciples until he has chosen what we know as the twelve to not only to walk with them, but to be with him in order that he may teach them about the kingdom of God. I, I don't know what you are going through, and I don't know how God is trying to get your attention, but you ought to understand that what God is trying to do for you is grab you long enough to teach you about his kingdom. And while we were sitting, while they were sitting there, while they were sitting there by the seaside, he continues to teach them and says to them from, <clears throat> from the 26th verse, he says, look now, the kingdom of God is like someone who scattered seed on the ground. And not only did they scatter it on the ground, but he says the so the soil went slept and got up in the morning and got up at night. And, and there was something happening. There was a growing happening that the soil knew nothing about. Now, agriculturally speaking, right now here in Mississippi, it is planting season. Not, not quite harvest time yet. It, it's not harvest time, beloved, but it's planting season. The season and time is here to plant what you want to eat. The time to have your ground tilled and the time to have the soil turned over is already upon us. There are also zones here in Mississippi, zone one through five. If you know what zone you live in, then you know it's time to plant. Time to plant has come. And in your planting, you need to know that there is a cool season for vegetables and there a warm season vegetables. By now, you should have tilled the soil. You should have strewn some fertilizer around. And some of your plants, some of your plants should already, the seed should already be in the ground. But the question is, how are we going to receive a harvest if we have not put a seed in the ground? That's the same question that God is asking you and I. How am I going to receive a harvest through you if you have not planted a seed in the ground? As much evil as we have encountered in this world, as much hell is breaking loose around us, how many seeds have you and I planted in the ground? How much word of God through Jesus Christ have we shared with somebody? As we begin to talk about the seed this morning, you also need to know that next week we'll be talking about you as the soil, but there needs to be a seed in the ground. The, certain, <clears throat> the seed in the ground, as the season approaches us, the question is, how am I going to receive a harvest is I, if I have not planted anything? God is asking you and I the same thing. How am I going to receive the harvest if you, as the child of God, have not planted anything? The Christian life is exemplified in this parable with the expression on your salvation. Whatever is happening in this parable, it's about your salvation. God, through Jesus Christ, is saying that the kingdom is made like the sower going out to throw seeds around. Said so there has been something sprinkled into this world. There has been something given to you and I, and it says not only have it been given to you, but there will be a harvest time. The history of the kingdom is briefly portrayed in these few words. Not only is the kingdom portrayed here, the church is seen here. The church has a heavenly principle that is seen here. The church has a heavenly principle and it's planted. The church is planted in this world. You and I have been planted in this world. Not only have we been planted, but we have been ordained and destined to grow. And apart from that, that fact is divine in nature. That growing fact is divine in nature. You can't make me grow. Only God can. And who can explain it's growth. Man didn't make the earth. I, I don't know what you've seen or what you've read. Man didn't make the earth. Science didn't make the earth. God created the heaven and created the earth. And not only did he create the heaven and the earth, this Bible said that the earth was without form. And God also separated the land from the sea. And when he separated the land from the sea, the earth now has the power to make things grow. Oh, the earth has the power 
The earth has the power to make the seed spring up that we cannot explain. Once you have put the seed in the ground, once you have received and now you have planted a seed in somebody else, don't worry about the seed. Don't worry about how it's going to grow. You just stroll the seeds. The earth has the power, and, and it's not for us to explain it. We can't explain the invisible thing. That invisible thing is invisible to our senses, but mighty in our presence. When the seed has been planted, what happens to it is invisible to us, but all when it comes out of the ground. In the eyes of our Lord here, the kingdom, the kingdom of nature is being explained. The kingdom of nature is one great miracle of the kingdom of grace. Your life is one great miracle of the kingdom of grace. Your joy is one great miracle of the kingdom of grace. Your your health, your strength is one (coughs) great miracle (coughs) of the kingdom of grace. And the means by which God, (coughs) in the providence of God, man was provided with food for the body and also the means by which you and I live and receive our spiritual food. The sower now is in alliance with the, with the silent forces of life. He, he cast the seed into this world, and by and by, and, and when the morning comes, and soon and very soon, and, 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 and whether you know it or not, there will be a gathering of the harvest. Jesus Christ, in, in this parable here in Mark, compares the kingdom. In many of his comparisons here, he compares the kingdom to the planting of a grain of corn or wheat. And in the planting of that, in in this particular parable, he says that, that when it has been planted, the the sower goes out every day to look and see what is going on with what he has planted. The first thing, the first thing here, two, two, two or three things. The first thing is, it is the nature of the seed to grow. The, the, the seed has, has, it's a plan already for the seed's life. The seed has already been predestined to grow. The nature of the seed is to grow. That that has been planted inside of you. That that spirit that has been planted inside of you. That life that has been planted inside of you. That zeal that has been planted inside of you is already destined to grow. Proverbs chapter 22 verse 6 says, Train a child in the way that they should go. And when they get old, they will not tarry from it. It means when they they grow up, they'll be able to, Put a seed into somebody else. They'll be able to share how they got over with somebody else. Although there may be bad weather, there there may be storms that rage in your life, there may be sun that shines bright in your life, the clouds may hang low in your life, the rain may come in your life, but all of this has to happen in order for the seed to grow. Although bad weather may keep it back for just a little while, it is still still destined to grow. It gets it. If it gets into the soil, if it gets into the soil, if you sow the seed, if you plant the seed, it is destined to grow. The seed that is left in your hand will not grow. The seed has to meet the soil. The seed is not foreign to the soil. The the seed is meant for the soil. It is some kind of kin To the soil, one is predestined to the other. And if you put it where it's supposed to be, then it'll do what it's supposed to do. If you receive your joy and your grace and your salvation 50 years ago and you have held on to what God has done for you, then that is not the seed God intended. God intends for you to plant that seed in somebody else. If the grain of sweet does not fall and dies and it will not grow again nor reproduce. <clears throat> it is destined to grow. It has to be meshed with the soil. It wouldn't do what it's supposed to do until the seed is planted, then it is just a seed. 
Until the soil receives the seed, then its forces are unknown. Neither of them can assert themselves into what they are supposed to do. You cannot be who God called you to be if you don't have that relationship with God through Jesus Christ. If you have not put yourself in God's hand, if you have not beckoned him to send you his Holy Spirit, neither of them can assert themselves if they aren't where they're supposed to be. But oh, when you bring the two together, when you realize that you are the soil and Jesus Christ is the seed, and, and when you bring those two together, that sweet Holy Spirit that bonds itself and all of the joy that pulls out of you because of God's mercy and because of God's grace, when you bind the two together, when you plant the seed, you are the planter. And there is a secret in the sea that you and I as human beings cannot explain. They are hidden from your view. The dead earth lives. And that sleeping seed now rises. They react on each other because they are made for each other. They need each other. They cannot come to anything until they come together. You and I can't be who we are supposed to be. And you think you're a good contractor because you learned all the shapes, sizes, and angles. No, you are destined to be a child of God. And you can't be that until we have accepted God through Jesus Christ. The second thing, the second thing is that in order to grow, the order of growth is already fixed. No matter what you, what you do, you, you can go out. I know the proper thing is to throw fertilizer on the ground and around seeds and to go out there and continue to pull the weeds. But, you know, weeds are going to grow. The Bible said let the wheat and the tare grow together. But you and I don't like to go walking through weeds to find our peas. We like to make sure the weeds are pulled before they grow up. <clears throat> the Bible says that the growth is already destined. Whatever is going to happen is going to happen. In order for you, you receiving the spirit of God is already supposed to happen. Everything in its own time has its own time and order. Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 1 through 8 tells us this. It says, for everything there is a season, a time for everything under heaven. And it talks about what those times are, a time to plant and a time to pluck up, a time to, to, to reap and a time to sow, a time, and all of that, a time to water. All of the, the seed is buried in the earth. You, it's not going to grow in your hand. The seed is buried in the earth, and who knows whether it's going to survive or not? Who knows what the sun is going to do to it? Who knows what the rain is going to do to it? Who knows what the elements of this world is going to do to it? God and only God knows. God and only God knows what's going to happen with the seed that has been buried in the ground. God and only God knew what was going to happen to the seed that was sent into this earth. God and only God knew what was going to happen to the seed that was taken over to Pilate's uh, uh, kingdom. God and only God knew what was going to happen when they whipped him all night long. God and only God knew what was going to happen when they took him out on the cross. God and only God knew what was going to happen when they put him in a bar a tomb and God and only God knew. God and only God knew what was going to happen on that third day. God and only God knows what's going to happen in that life of yours. God and only God knows what's going to happen when you accept him as your Lord and Savior through Jesus Christ. God and only God knows the secret of the seed. God God and only God knows what's going to happen. You and I, as bold as you are on Monday, and as bold as you are on Wednesday, and as bold as you are on Friday, and, and as bold as you are on Sunday, you ought to be bold each and every day knowing that once you put your hand in the master's hand, whatever God has planned, I'm so glad. I'm so glad for you and I that God knows the secret to the seed. I'm so glad for you and I that God 
knows the secret. Because if it was any other way, if it was any other way, you and I wouldn't be where we are. You see what's happening all around us. If it was any other way, you'd be all, we'd all be put in a, in a hand basket and carried off somewhere. But I'm so glad this morning that, that God has the secret. And as we get ready to close and get ready to live into this week, remember that you are the soil and God is trying to place his secret. The mystery of life is trying to be placed inside of you. And you, just like the soil, when he goes and puts a hole in the ground and the ground opens up and becomes receptive to the to the seed and closes back. You have to be receptive to the Spirit of God through Jesus Christ. And then again, you have to wait and allow God to reveal God's self. We continue. <clears throat> we continue to pray for you. We continue to pray with you. And as we plan on our future back in this space and, and any other space together, we ask God to continue to go with you, guide, guard, and protect you. And we also ask you to come back with us on next Sunday. From this same book, from this same chapter, from these same verses, we'll talk to you about the sore of this world. May God bless you, and may God keep you. Amen. Your favor. This is my.